Hey, are you ready to shake up how you think about people, performance, and productivity? In this episode, we're joined by Connor Cooneen uh, of The Irishman Speaks, and who has a knack for blending humor and business wisdom. Known for his engaging style and sharp insights, Connor brings a fresh perspective to the table, showing you how to elevate performance and keep your team thriving, all while keeping things light and fun. So if you're ready for practical strategies with a side of Irish wit, this is one conversation you don't want to miss. Connor's unique take on business will leave you both entertained and inspired to take action. So tune in today on Profit with a Plan podcast and discover how you can get the best out of your people while having fun and a few laughs along the way. Hey, entrepreneurs, are you trying to make bigger profits in your small business? If you're like most of us business owners, increasing your profitability is always on your mind. And you're probably looking for ways to grow your revenue while growing your company. Well, you found a podcast that shares ideas to help you do just that. I'm Marcia Reiner, known as the Profit Booster and a business growth strategist. I've helped tons of small business owners to establish and implement a tangible plan that guarantees increased profitability, guides your growth, and plans for your future exit. Because building a highly profitable and sale-ready business creates a win-win scenario. That's more money now and a windfall when it's time to let go. And I want to share strategies that I've learned with you on today's Profit with a Plan podcast. But before we get started, I have something really special to share with you. If you ever thought about supercharging your business, you want to avoid those profit plateaus or even get rid of those operational headaches or growth roadblocks? Well, I've created a brand new Profit Booster playbook just for you. You'll uncover three essential strategies and the quick way to take action on them. Now, this isn't just a single page report. It's filled with impactful strategies, actionable steps, and expert guidance to elevate your profits. Go download this free playbook at boostingprofit.com. All right, I'm excited to have my guest on today, Connor Cooneen. Uh, our guest is known as the Irishman, and he is happily exiled in Chicago, where he says the Guinness is good and the people are friendly. And he has been force-fed more corned beef and green beer than he ever had in Ireland. Connor Cooneen is the Irishman Speaks. Connor is a business speaker to associations, corporations, and healthcare who use a lot of humor to reinforce the power of his message. While he says his mission is to improve people, performance, and productivity with a smile, he also likes to define it as a combination of business blarney, which is and BS, right? Which can be business strategy, brand strategy, business solutions, or even business storytelling, along with a little bit of, you know what it's called, BS. Connor, welcome to Profit with a Plan podcast. Hey, Marcia, delighted to be uh, with you here. As uh, we've indicated, I'm just based outside of Chicago. And I actually tell my audiences that because Illinois is now such a bankrupt state, this is the road from Naperville where I live into Chicago. So delighted to be on the show. You know, it's beautiful background. You know, um, I've always I've always wanted to visit Ireland just because it seems so green and beautiful and everything. Are there really those rock walls all over the place that divide the 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 housing uh, you know act as fences? There are, but it's very much part of the rural Ireland now. If you go to, I, I tell people when they go to Ireland, Marcy, it is one of the most enjoyable, friendly, and just life enhancing places you can go to. But Dublin is a great city, but it's just a big city. Get out of Dublin as soon as you can. Go to the west of Ireland, take the back roads, and you will find a few roads like this, especially on the uh, the island off the west coast of Ireland. But this is kind of more of a uh, a throwback to the past rather than the the real Ireland. No, but it's a wonderful spot and a great place to have a good time, relax, and have a few good pints of Guinness. <laughs> and, no, and no corned beef, by the way. We do <laughs> not eat corned beef in Ireland, very rarely. Isn't that crazy what we do to other um, 
uh, traditions and think it's, oh, we're living the Irish lifestyle. <laughs> it's not even anything that the Irish would eat, right? Yeah, absolutely. Because I remember my brother lives in New York. And I said to Victor, my brother, a couple of years ago, I said, do you remember eating corned beef in Ireland? And he said, no, I don't. And then he hesitated and he said, oh, yeah, we used to have it now and again out of a tin. So it was real, probably processed stuff. But the kind of corned beef we get here, never had it over there from what that's, I can recall. That's hilarious. All right. So you and your brother, when did you all come into the U.S. and what drove, drove you here? When my brother came in maybe 35 years ago, uh, I myself have been working on my Chicago accent for about 25 years now, Marcia. So <laughs> nailed it, obviously, as you can see. It's working out well. I love it. I love a man with an accent. You know, most of us, most of us U.S. folks like the accent, whether it's, it's, you know, authentic or not. You know, um, what was it? Arnold Schwarzenegger kept his accent for years and years and years. And you're like, how did they do that? And I guess you just have to work on it, right? Well, it's, it's partly maybe that, but it's not an affectation, though. I, my understanding is that once you come into a new environment uh, at 20 or 21 years of age or older, most people actually do hold on to their original accent. My lovely daughter was 14 when we dragged her over here. You would not know now that she was from Ireland unless she'd be talking to a few friends back in Ireland on the phone. And for a few minutes after she comes off the phone conversation, you might get a bit of a little lilt of an Irish bro going on. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. I love it. Well, thank you. I'm sure this is going to be a an enjoyable conversation for people just to listen to your accent, what, let alone the value that you're going to bring to the show today. So, okay. So how did you get into the space of people, right? And and productivity and those kind of things. Because, you know, I, I'm not going to use the lemonade stand again because I use it all the time. But, you know, what drove you into that kind of space? Well, what happened was that I came over originally. I was working uh, on a corporate role. I was a VP of marketing with a large food service uh, organization. And after I left them, I decided I didn't want to go back into corporate again, and I wanted to do my own thing. So I started doing some work on consulting in the food service area, was being asked to speak at a couple of conferences, and was being asked back. At the same time, after I'd separated from Unilever, the company I was with, I was with an old placement company for a period of time, and I saw just how painful and frustrating job search was for a lot of people. It wasn't for me because I didn't want to go back into corporate. So I said to the old placement company on one occasion, look, I'll do a lunch and learn uh, next Tuesday on how to stay motivated during these difficult times, thinking that might be it. I did it. They said, Connor, will you do it again? Mm -hmm. And will you do it again? And then I got involved with a number of community groups here, just helping them uh, with their job seekers. And I've been doing that ever since. And it's something that gives me real emotional fulfillment. It's not an income stream, but I help a lot of people who are in job search, search to stay sane, motivated and productive during a difficult time. And what I found with that, Marcy, was that I was able to connect with audiences, help them to get through these difficult times. I took some of those messages from that, uh, combined it with my business experience and eventually morphed into Irishman Speaks. What? Which is which is which the is kind of a stand-up oh. comedy, right? Yeah, the wrong side, isn't it? Yeah, so uh, I love doing this. That eh? what the wrong side? Okay. I've actually <laughs> got a person here, uh, an invisible friend of mine that I regularly speak to on Zoom calls. But what it does do is a serious point now. It allows me to reinforce the key point that I might have made. So uh, I we might even do it during this session. But if I say something that I think is profound, I might go. I said that I said something that was very profound and to come yeah. back. So it's it's just trying to make the Zoom or virtual call more interesting and interactive as well. You know what? And and that's what it requires in today's crazy lifestyle. You know, I mean, you know, there was a there was a, a good light that came out of the COVID thing is is that we're able to communicate to more people comfortably from, you know, I'm in Las Vegas, you're in mm -hmm. Chicago, and we're having a great conversation. And, and yeah. in 
years past that might not have been easy on it. So to be able to make it fun and we'll call it 3D a little bit, um, you know, I think I think that's a great way of, of of doing it. And and so yeah. So if you start talking to your friend, that's okay. We'll we'll let him on. Should I put another screen for him on the bottom? She said it was okay to talk to you. <laughs> 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 Fantastic. All right. So Connor, tell us, um, what are some of the things that that we need to look at to keep our employees and our team members and the people around us engaged? Right. And as you're aware, Marcy, employee engagement and employee retention is top of mind for virtually every organization right now. So what my mission is to improve people, performance and productivity with a smile. And I think if organizations can improve their people, their performance and their productivity and do it with a smile, it's going to help morale, it's going to help teamwork, camaraderie, and you will be able to retain people better. One of the core vehicles I use, Marcia, is a concept called the gift of GAB. And GAB is an acronym for Goals, Attitude, Behavior. Oh, goals, I love it. Attitude, Behavior. And how if you adopt and adapt this concept as a leader, as a manager, or as a co-worker with your, in your organization on goals, attitude and behavior, it will help you to create a better uh, work environment, better teamwork and better employee engagement at the end of the day. And uh, we'll go through the concepts in a few minutes time, but I do believe that if you've got happier, happy employees, well, you're gonna get better productivity. But the other thing you're gonna get is better retention, but also I think these people can become brand ambassadors for your business. And mm -hmm. that I think is critical. In other words, uh, I often ask people or leaders, what do you want your employees to say about your company and your leadership style when they're down at the local bar or pub or coffee shop, something like that? And people don't spend enough time thinking about that question, I think. Well, I think I think that's a really good point. But also, it, you know, in years past, you're spending a large percentage of your hours of each day with these people. So why not make it someplace that everybody feels welcomed and, and, and valued and you know, you're know you able to motivate your teams to help you achieve the goal that you want in your business, right? Uh, absolutely. And one of my core beliefs on this is that as a leader in general, you cannot improve substantially your employees' net worth unless you're an Elon Musk or something like that. But as a leader, you can substantially improve your employees' self-worth, mm. how they feel about themselves. And I encourage leaders, managers, co-workers to be intentional about trying to improve their colleagues' self-worth. And if you can have your colleague feeling appreciated, going home saying that, hey, they do appreciate what I do inside here, or they make me feel a little bit better, I think you have a much better chance then of, uh, holding on to that employee, getting the kind of productivity, and having the employee come in the following morning, uh, believing that this is going to be a place where I'm going to be appreciated and where I can work with my colleagues in a positive way. I love it. I love it. Because, you know, we, we all know it's expensive to hire. It really is expensive yeah. to hire the marketing to get them in, the training, you know, the benefits, everything that you're spending all this, you know, time and energy to hire. Don't you want to retain, right? Don't you want them to perform at their optimal uh, levels so that, I mean, it's not cracking a whip and, you know, ask, asking them to work and do a, a, a 10 hour day in four hours, but you're asking them to do their best and help you as the business owner to achieve your goals. So what better way to motivate than to make them feel good about what they're doing? Most definitely. And that's what the basic idea behind the gift of Gab is goals, attitude and behavior is all about. And if you wish, we can go through a few of the points. Yeah, tell me a little bit more about the gift <laughs> of Gab. I love okay, it. So the first element of uh, Gab is about uh, goals. And we often speak about uh, people having a clear goal and a clear vision as to what success will look like. And that's a difficult question, I think, to try and address. But when I'm speaking, I, I do extended versions of this in workshops, but in a keynote, I'll say, we want to talk about macro goal and micro goals. Mm. And the, the macro goal is for each of you in the audience that I'm speaking to is, what do you want to be famous for? Mm. Now, I don't mean famous like Lady Gaga or like uh, Kim Kardashian or something like that. I mean, <laughs> what, 
What do you want to be famous for within your work environment? What is it that you would like your colleagues to say about you when you're not in the room? Mm. What is it you would like your manager to say about you when he or she is proposing you for a new role or for promotion? And I think if people, especially the early start of part of their career, coming into a new position in a new company, pay attention to, all right, what do I want them to say about me when they're talking about me? All right, I obviously want them to say that, uh, all right, she's capable of doing the job. But there's more than that, though. Uh, are you a good team worker? Are you innovative? Are you proactive? Uh, do you follow up, etc.? If you can define, I suggest people just take three attributes, define what you want to be known for by your teamwork, be famous for, uh, then you can start on making it happen. So that's the, the macro goal that uh, I speak to organizations about. And then I go to the <clears throat> micro goal or micro goals and I actually have a, uh, briefly, I've got a, an acronym which spells CHAPS, C-H-A-P-S, that makes, provides the five micro goals. And what I say, uh, Marcy, on this is that I don't need to know what it is you said you want to be famous for within your organization. What I do That's believe- That's internally, five, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What I do believe is that the five micro goals I'm now going to give you will help you to achieve your macro goal. So the five micro goals briefly in the time that we've got, I'll ask you a couple of questions first to highlight them. The idea behind goals, by the way, is that if we achieve a goal, we feel better and uh, it'll motivate us to go after it again. So mm -hmm. would it be fair, Marcia, to say that if someone compliments you, you feel better about yourself? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, we'll flip it. Would it be fair to say that if you compliment someone, they're going to feel better about themselves. Yes, but it has okay. to be genuine though, right? You're to, not going to go, be... oh, what a beautiful shirt you're wearing today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, as I said, give an example of a, you can do, people can find different ways to compliment people. I mean, you could say something like, wow, your hair doesn't look as bad today as it did yesterday. <laughs> Now, that one doesn't work particularly well, but actually <laughs> I do give that example in my presentations just to break up the stock serious point about compliment. That's what I mean about adding humor to the presentation to reinforce a point. But the basic idea here about the first element of the CHAPS acronym then is that, all right, uh, we understand the power of a compliment. So let's treat that creating a micro goal around a compliment. And the micro Love goal, Marcy, is that tomorrow or this afternoon, I will compliment one co-worker. Nice. Okay, right. So when I compliment that one co-worker, what happens? I realize I've achieved my micro goal. Uh, the endorphins kind of kick in. I feel slightly better about myself. Mm -hmm. But the person that I've actually complimented, endorphins are kicking in for them as, as well. They're feeling better. And as a result of that, the simple compliment can be a win-win for everyone. That is in, involved in that situation. And you did raise a serious point where it has to be uh, <clears throat> genuine. I, I do think that in people are slow to compliment because they're unsure about how they can compliment. But I'll give two quick ways that you can find some sources for compliments. One is uh, if you've got, a let's say, a daily meeting with your team, which you might have if you're in a call center or in food service or on a factory floor, for instance, and those daily meetings are normally quick, fast, and no one is paying any attention to you as a leader. Okay, right. So one of the ways to do to get their attention is ask the question, what did we do well yesterday? Mm. Okay, so someone is going to come up with some kind of a comment or positive thing that um, Mary Lou helped me to move pallets from uh, section A to section Z kind of thing when we were short staffed, etc. So what can I do then as a leader? I can say fair play to you, Mary Lou. Well done. What does that mm -hmm. do for Mary Lou? Makes her feel better. What mm -hmm. does it do for the rest of the team? If see, they see that people are appreciated for doing good work. And after the following day, I asked the question, what did we do well yesterday? I'm going to get another hand raised by someone else. And over a period of time, you're going to get conversation going and people are raising their hands and you're genuinely complimenting your team. 
I like that because you're there's always something you've done well, right? Yeah. And and instead of beating them down and go, what did we do wrong yesterday? We didn't achieve our goals. We didn't do this. You're saying, what did we do well? So they can pull out something else because people like that feeling and they're going to try to do better the next day. So oh, I absolutely. love that. Yeah. And the thing about that is that you kind of really hit on a very important point. Let's say we've got the, a weekly sales meeting or a weekly supply chain or manufacturing meeting. What's the first thing normally on the agenda? Problems. Yep. Problems. What's the second thing on the agenda? Yep. You got to you got to break the okay. rocks, right? But, but if we start with what did we do well in the last week, you're bound to have someone say something positive. You compliment them. So we're starting the meeting in a positive way. And when you compliment people, appreciate them, it is easier to then critique them or coach them in a certain way when they're not performing to the level that you want them to mm. perform. And it can be appreciated or it can be accepted by the person you're critiquing or, or coaching because you all yesterday said something positive to them and the person knows that your general style is a compliment, 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 coach, compliment, compliment, coach kind of thing. So I like it. it's a really powerful micro goal that everyone can implement. That's Love the first comment of the chaps. Outcoming. Okay, so what's what's H? H is for hear. What? I said hear. Hear. Yeah. Listen. Okay. Listen. Yeah. yeah. Hear the words. Thank you. I'll set myself a micro goal that at work tomorrow I will deliberately do something to hear the words. Thank you. Now, quite mm. likely at work tomorrow, a few people might say thank you to me, but it'll mm. go over my head because it's wallpaper. But if I go into work with a deliberate plan, that I'm going to do something to hear the words thank you from one of my co colleagues. Nice. Well, I've got to do something positive for that person. When I, like I hear that. the words thank you, I realize I've achieved my micro goal. I feel slightly better. The person I'm working with, they feel slightly better because I've done something for them. They appreciate me, hopefully, more as a leader and as a work colleague. I like that. I like that. Two yeah. positive actions here. I'm kind of feeling a theme, Connor. We're going places. See, we're walking down the road positively, I tell you. <laughs> right. Love it. So we got in the CHAPS acronym, five micro goals. Got compliment. Hear the words. Thank you. A is for address. Now, Marcia, by address here, I do not mean that little pink chiffon dress that I was seen wearing on Facebook over the weekend. That should that not, was not be. me. <laughs> <laughs> that's true that should not have been published has it come down it has okay all right we're okay all right. it's no longer on facebook all right but by address here i mean address people with their name mm. when you're in conversation with them exactly without going into too much detail here now and the logic behind this but i would suggest that the most powerful word i can use when speaking with you is marcia i love it i, I love it yeah. And for those of us that have difficulty remembering somebody's name, if you say it and repeat it five or six times, next week when you're the leader walking through the floor, right, or through yeah. the production level and you say, oh, Connor, thank you. You did a great job. Then it's like, he remembered my name. She Absolutely. Remembered my and name. complimented me as well at the same time. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, the, the, the most powerful word for you in, addre in addressing me in this conversation is Connor. And, and it really is something that makes a difference. I encourage people, when I'm talking about with job seekers, if they're going for an interview, use the CHAPS concept. Find a reason to compliment the employer, but make sure that uh, two or three times in that 40-minute interview, you address them with their name. Love it. They, you know, the interviewer might not really realize why am I kind of make getting this connection with the person, but it's just subtle little things. If you're on a sales call, address them with their name once or twice in the conversation as well. So mm. we've got mm. bonus, 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 bonus. We're getting all <laughs> sorts of things we can this use. This is incredible. Life. <laughs> so love the it, love it. Hear the words, thank you. Address people with their name. P is for, you just used the word a moment ago positive yeah okay and the idea here marcy is that we know we've all worked with people who suck the energy out of the room <laughs> debbie yes, downer sir. comes in and she sucks the energy out of the room and then our twin brother danny downer comes in sucks more energy out of the room but you can also push energy into the room push motivation into the room and one of the simpler ways to do it 
is to deliberately use positive words or positive phrases when you're in conversation or when you're working with your team. So I suggest a micro goal along with a compliment, hear the words, thank you and address people is that I will deliberately use a positive word or a positive phrase more in conversation. And I genuinely do believe that if you start using positive words like amazing, brilliant, cheerful, delightful, energetic, friendly, Guinness, Guinness is a positive word to an Irish person. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I never thought Guinness, that dark brown, black beer that is almost chunky. I'm not a Guinness fan. And then that makes, that's a positive word. Will we stop the interview now? <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll keep going, we'll keep going. <laughs> I didn't say it was bad. I'm just not a fan. I don't like right. to chew on my beer. <laughs> it, it is like, we call it mother's milk back in Ireland. Mother's so milk, love yeah, it. Yeah. Okay. So, but, but basically, though, what happens, though, is if you get into the habit of using positive words and positive phrases like those, and you use some other elements of the chaps concept, I do believe after a time, your work colleagues will, will be saying about you and the vibe and the atmosphere you're creating, that it's amazing, brilliant, cheerful, delightful, energetic, friendly. Let's go for a Guinness or whatever a beverage of choice is. Love it. Right? But all of these, though, require that people need to be intentional. Mm. I, that's a word I regularly use in my presentations and conversations. It doesn't happen because you want it to happen. you got to be intentional. Mm. So if I'm intentional about using the CHAPS concept, I'll constantly compliment people. I'll hear the words, thank you. I'll address them with their name. I'll use positive words. And ultimately, what I hope will also happen, my final micro goal is, I want to put a smile on someone's face. Yay! Hey. All right. There okay. you go. And, and what happens when we smile? All the neurotransmitters and the neurochemicals start to bur burbling around in our head. And uh, the dopamine, the oxytocin, and everything starts uh, coming in. We feel better because uh, something positive has happened or someone has made us laugh. I'm not saying that workplace should be a hilarious place, but there's no reason why you can't put a smile and your employees or your clients or your co-workers face from time to time. And if you can bring the chaps, if you get into the habit as a leader, a co-worker or a collaborator of using the chaps five micro goals, I do believe you will achieve that macro goal that you had set yourself that you want to be famous for within the organization. And I don't need to know what that macro goal is. I love it. I mean, I'm sitting here going, I think this methodology you know, having the chaps and the and the ultimate goal, right? Um, this can be used in so many areas of your life and business because what is the thing that is most important about your customer, right? Is that they know, like, and trust you. So if they like you <clears throat> because you've used this chat methodology, then they're going to be more apt to spend money with you. Yeah. If you if you if your employees like you, they're going to be more apt to do the work that you're asking them to do to help you achieve your goal. I mean, I could probably go on with this with referral partners, with your spouse, with your kids. Um, you know, I mean, you're there's just even if you were in line at a grocery store. And you want, you got one item and the person in front of you has, you know, a whole basket full of them. They'd be more apt to say, because you were pleasant and said something yeah. nice or cheerful and made them feel good to let you go in front of them. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I can keep going. You, you, I, 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 and the idea behind this is I, I try to work a lot in using um, uh, acronyms and the CHAPS acronym is dead easy for people to remember. So they'll remember the word. Now, if I get five uh, reasons, five micro goals and didn't encapsulate it into a CHAPS acronym, people might remember one or two. But the benefit of acronyms as a speaker, I find, Marcy, is that people will remember the word and then go, I remember chat C, I remember H. What was it? A, A, there was four. Oh, yeah, it was address, wasn't it? So you've right. given them the framework that they can work uh, with going forward. And uh, your point about you can tell us, use this for your spouse or kids. I actually say sometimes when I'm on stage, and by the way, I do, I sometimes uh, moonlight as a marriage counselor. I'll say, <laughs> say to the group, 
Can you see the benefit of chats when you go home with your spouse? When was the last time you seriously complimented them or deliberately addressed them with their proper name or an affectionate name kind of thing? And it's a simple concept that works anywhere, really, in uh, this today's world, I would suggest, chaps. Uh, this has been so eye-opening and so, and, and don't take this wrong, simple. Yeah. You know, that anybody can apply this in yeah. any instance in their life and more importantly in their business to help them to improve the energy in the room, the production that they have, and, you know, just making them like, what do we, when we, when we really think about this, what do we want to be known for, right? We want to be known for that person who was, you know, nice or kind or yeah. whatever it was, you know, not the, not the, the ball bruster, whip cracker, you know, that yeah. kind of thing. Um, but the one that gets the most and, yeah. and I think that that's, that's a really good feeling to have. Yeah. So. yeah most of, and you know, interesting one, if, for a real life example, I was doing a major project with a food manufacturing company last year. They're having a lot of problems with employee retention. And I, I, it was kind of understandable. It was food manufacturing. People were down on the factory floor in uh, wet, damp conditions and not very attractive place uh, to work. So I was working with the supervisors and team leads across the, the country to get them to buy into improving people performance and productivity. And when it comes to behavior, B, G is the goals, attitude, behavior. I, I asked them to just take out a, I give them a yellow sticky pad and say, write down three words that you would like your uh, colleagues to say about you when you're not in the room. Okay, it kind of goes back to the goals one, this is the macro goal. Right. Without exaggeration, so let's say with about um, I'd say about 140 team leads and total stock supervisors I was dealing with, without exaggeration, I would say over 100 of them wrote down a word of either kind, compassionate, or empathy that they wanted to be known for. Now, these are supervisors and team leads. Now, here's the question for you, and this is the important thing, I think, for corporations. When does anyone ever see words like uh, empathy, compassion, sincere or kind in any job space. And yet that's actually what's critical in whether or not your team respects for you, works for you and continues to say good things about you and stays in the organization. Exactly. Exactly. That's never on a job application. It's never on a duties list to yeah. be empathetic and understand they're like no we have goals we have tactics we're trying to get this going we have kpis you've got to meet you've got to bring your team together motivate them to, you know, it's all the the hard stuff and never the soft stuff yeah it actually makes somebody feel appreciated yeah and valued so that they can work in that ugly environment yeah. and and get the job done every day most uh, definitely. Uh, it's just something that people, again, don't pay enough attention to. And this is why I talk about being intentional about trying to get the best out of your team. I remember, uh, no, I this was uh, years ago when I was just starting out, and I may have gotten slightly roast into at this stage, but I was working with a client, and they were the leaders in the organization, and they, they were saying things like, we need to change the culture in our business. And I'm kind of saying to myself, guys, you know, the guys have been here for years. Top down. Yeah, you've, you're the responsible for the culture and you're bringing me into kind of, you know, I didn't um, I say it as bluntly as this to them, right? But I mean, I kind of indicated it, it's, it filters down kind of thing. If we need to change the culture, you've got to accept that there are some areas where your interaction with your team or how you are perceived is going to have to change as well if you're sincere about changing the culture in the organization. Yep, you can only change you, right? Yeah. So if you yeah. come out with a new way of thinking and a new way of, of being and trying for the goal of making somebody else feel better, you're going to get so much more. I had, we'll, we'll, we'll wrap on this one, but I had a friend who tells me the story of sitting in a bar talking to these gentlemen and they were all waiting for an airplane 
And the gentlemen were like, well, what do you do? And, and she asked the guys these questions and they started talking about them. They called the airplane and said, oh my gosh, you're the great years. You're the coolest person we've ever met. She hardly said a few words besides ask questions and made them feel good. Yeah, and they I... thought she was the most important person or, or the best person in the world when, because they got to talk about themselves and feel good about themselves, which is yeah. crazy. Yeah, it's a, I mean, the, the human being, the brain is not logical. We work on, on uh, emotion. And one final point I would make that uh, relates uh, to this and the power of the, the gift of God. I do believe that human beings mirror human beings' reaction. So if I go in with, to a meeting with all guns blazing, what's going to happen? All the guns blazing are going to be coming back at me. If I go in uh, open-minded, apparently trying to get a conversation and a, a agreement going, I'm going to have a better initial response from the people that I'm dealing with. Now, it might blow up, uh, but at the same time, though, it's important to remember that human beings mirror human beings' reaction. And the, the more you pay attention to that as you're dealing with your team, the more likely that you're going to be more appropriate in your relationships and how you interact with the team as well to make it more positive. Love it. Connor, this has been a fantastic conversation. I have really gotten so much out of your acronym and your ideas and the gift of gab. So where can listeners find out more about you and, and some of the styles that you teach? Right. Well, if they go on to the crossroads down here, okay, and take a left, <laughs> they'll find a, a website called irishmanspeaks.com, irishmanspeaks. I'm on uh, Twitter, now known as X. Uh, Irishman Speaks, uh, Instagram, uh, TikTok, which I'm starting to find very useful, I've got to say, as Irishman Speaks as well. And LinkedIn, it's uh, Connor Canine. Connor, by the way, Marcia is spelled with only one N. Uh, my parents couldn't afford two Ns back in Ireland, so I've got C-O-N-O-R. But yes, if they come to go to irishmanspeaks.com, uh, you'll find a lot of my information, kind of material that I do. And the YouTube, of course, is Irishman Speaks as well. Love it. Well, your branding is across the board and, you know, that's super value for people to find you. So I love the, I love the energy that you're putting out. And, and I think that there's so much more we can gain by, um, uh, by what is it, uh, attracting people with honey rather than <laughs> vinegar <laughs> or whatever those analogies are that true, were from true, years true. past. So yeah. this, this is yeah. wonderful. All right, listeners, I hope you found a couple ideas to put into your business that will help your team be more productive and profitable and, um, and perform better and just be a happier culture and environment uh, inside your business. I know I have. And I know that if you go follow Connor on all of his social media places and YouTube, that you'll be able to keep the, keep the energy flowing with you. And as I mentioned, hey, how would you like to supercharge your business? Go download my new Profit Booster Playbook packed with three strategies and the actionable steps that you can use to make this your most profitable year ever. Remember, go grab it for free at boostingprofit.com. And Connor and I would love to hear what your favorite piece out of that CHAPS framework was and which one you're going to start implementing right now, right today with your team and the people that are around you. Put it in the comments so we can hear it and um, maybe uh, Connor can give you a little bit more ideas or feedbacks on how to improve that. So while you're at it, subscribe. You don't want to miss future podcasts. And as always, you can catch Profit with a Plan on any of your favorite podcast players. And we're looking forward to more great profitable information on next week's show. So until then, make your plans and profit with them. Thanks so much, Connor. Be a pleasure, Marcia. Take care and best with your business.